G'day gents, g'day ladies, I hope you're all going well, and uh, if you're finding that your wheel bearing is noisier than your spouse, your <laughs> your mother-in-law, or uh, <laughs> basically you just need to replace your wheel bearing, um, I had that happening with dad's uh, Falcon wagon here, and I decided to make a video as I was going in case it helps someone one day, so let's get to it. Okay guys, now here's a very quick montage for you all, just showing some of the steps involved with uh, completing this job. Um, with the brake caliper and the rotor out of the way, we get access to the hub and wheel bearing assembly. Just take a listen at how bad this one was. That's crazy. Now guys, as always, um, please DIY with care and with caution on your cars. Um, if there's something that you don't feel comfortable with, leave it to the professionals. Um, there already was some really good videos on YouTube that guided me with what to do and what to expect, but I felt there were some aspects that were a bit hazy. So here we are, just videoed my process for you all, and I hope it all helps. So without further ado, cue the new intro. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be changing a wheel bearing on a Ford Falcon BF. <laughs> Alright guys, so... Uh, one of the first things that I needed to buy was a 36 millimeter axle socket. So that way we could get access to the nut that's actually holding the wheel bearing onto the car. And um, I got that from Super Cheap Auto. Make sure you've got one uh, before you get started with this job. Okay, step number uno. Um, jack up your car and put it on a jack stand. And you can go ahead and take your wheel off. Um, and as always, make sure you are using a jack stand. You know, safety number one priority, guys. Absolutely. Um, nothing worse than having your mum's car fall onto the ground and injure yourself. <laughs> All right, so we need to get this dust cap off. Um, feel free to go ahead and just use a flathead. And um, you can go and turn the actual hub assembly around and work your way around. It's a little firm at the beginning, but that cap just falls straight off. Now, uh, with that out of the way... Um, we actually see for the first time the nut that's holding the old hub bearing assembly on. Um, before we go and undo that though, let's go and um, remove the actual rotor and the brake caliper. So by removing those, you will get some good access to actually re remove the old unit. So this is step number one, getting behind and removing these two 15 millimeter bolts here. So one upper one, one lower one and that disconnects um, the brake line and um, with that out of the way we're able to go I just uh, soaked up the bolts to help them um, remove a little easier and um, with a 15 millimeter socket um, go ahead and loosen these bolts so that's the lower one then work your way up to the top one um, so this step's important guys because if your rotor and your brake caliper are both on um, you're not going to be able to remove the old um, hub assembly unit. Um, so let's get to the top bolt here. Loosey goosey. Alright. Um, and with uh, this bolt out of the way um, you're able to actually remove the rotor and the brake caliper all in one um, and that way it's just a little easier for um, you know, reassembly later on. Um, this is that top uh, brake line kind of adapter I should say or the, the actual unit that holds the brake line comes out with the bolt and um, make sure you've got a bucket or something handy uh, if you're working on your own because it's quite a heavy uh, lot taking the rotor and the caliper off together but uh, sliding that out you're able to go and rest that um, onto your bucket um, safe out of the way and um, ready to chuck back on right at the end uh, with that out of the way we've got access to our hub assembly um, if you had to listen earlier but yeah how rooted is this that's crazy all right so um what you'll normally hear while driving is uh, the wheel bearing you know, being a little noisy as you're driving. So in this case, because it was the front left, every time we turned to the right and the car was leaning on the left, we heard the noise. So we knew that that was the left one. Um, getting that 36 millimeter axle uh, socket on, I've got a really long breaker bar, which really made uh, this job really easy. So if you don't have one, um, if you can invest in one, it'll make your life a lot easier. 
Otherwise, if you've got just a, uh, a standard, um, uh, I should say, ratchet, you can put a pole on the end, and uh, that'll give you more leverage. Uh, but yeah, that breaker bar made it nice and easy. And here, you can just go ahead and just remove the old nuts. Just a little closer, guys, so you can see um, some of the action with better clarity. Um, so with that nut out the way, um, that's really all that's actually um, you know holding the hub assembly on. So what you'll find is depending on how bad your wheel bearing uh, assembly is, it may not come off. It might have been seized onto the shaft. Now here, as I found out, um, the inner bearing had actually kind of welded itself onto the actual shaft so we see after a few hits from a few different angles with a rubber mallet I was able to knock off um, the front bearing and the hub assembly and we can see that back uh, or I should say the rear uh, bearing is still on the actual shaft um, of the car here so I was able to remove this kind of metal collar just with a screwdriver but I found that removing that um, inner bearing um, I should say outer bearing. Mm, someone will correct me in the comments. <laughs> but yeah, let's go for, uh, I had to actually go to a, um, again, another car parts store um, for a specialty tool to be able to remove that um, inner um, uh, bearing or outer bearing, whichever it may be. Um, I decided to remove the um, ABS sensor because uh, I didn't want to damage it being so close to that bearing. Um, so with, a, I believe, a seven or eight millimeter uh, bolt, please excuse my memory, um, uh, that kind of bolt holding the ABS sensor uh, comes out and then you can just very carefully pull out the ABS sensor out of harm's way. Now guys, just to um, again give you a bit of a heads up on that uh, specialty tool set that I got from um, Super Cheap Auto, the local car parts store. Um, it was a specific uh, bearing removal kit, and um, I'll pan to that in just a moment. Here we are. They call it a bearing separator and puller set, so that helps you to actually pull and remove the seized on uh, bearing. Um, quite a few different sizes, and um, depending on you know your make and model, um, you know they've got different sized um, separators, and they kind of pinch in behind the back um, half of the sleeve of the bearing and help it pull forward. Um, here you'll see my very <laughs> first and raw uh, attempt at using this um, specialty tool, but it really did make the job so much easier. My goodness, if I didn't you know, purchase this and invest in this set, I don't know where I'd uh, be. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have been able to complete this job. Um, alrighty, so let's have a bit of a closer look here. You see two different sized uh, pullers, uh, depending on the size of your bearing and the, uh, the sheath. So here there's uh, some nuts on the top and the bottom that allow the teeth of the actual puller to separate. And once you've got this loosened enough, you'll be able to seat it around the collar of the bearing. Awesome, so there's um, that point right at the back and I found um, seating uh, this puller sideways like this was the way to go. You can slowly hand uh, tighten the nuts and um, the actual far end of these um, you know, teeth will start to pull in behind the actual uh, bearing shaft itself. So with um, a spanner and a socket, I was able to start tightening the upper and the lower sections of the um, puller here. And with a little bit of adjustment, I was able to start uh, the process. I've just sped it up here and a little closer so you can see as you're starting to tighten the teeth together, it uh, wedges itself behind the actual um, collar and shaft of the, of the bearing here. And uh, you're able to start to essentially pull forward this seized on uh, bearing. Very satisfying actually. It took a little while in, in real life as um, I found it was a little bit of trial and error but um, as long as you've got some patience here guys you'll be able to 
start to sh you know pull this uh, bearing forward, or I should say this um, collar of the bearing forward. Once you get to a certain point, you're able to utilize another section of the bearing kit, and um, I should say the puller kit, and you're able to go through and thread these guys on. And what that gets lets you do is, um, this is just an extension uh, that I later realized I didn't need, but anywho, <laughs> you can use these extensions if you need for certain applications. But basically these uh, extensions allow us to uh, start to actually pull that collar of the bearing out even further. So that earlier part of the kit um, reached in from behind the collar to start bringing it forward. And using these here, we're able to thread this, uh, you would say a really long bolt through this center section which then drives itself against the actual uh, head of the shaft um, of the actual uh, steering rod and we're then able to continue pulling the collar forward. This one's a 17, 17 millimeter. What do we have here? I think it was a 17 millimeter. And here we can see we can bring that thread forward and as soon as it makes contact here it starts to actually bring the collar and that silver part of the kit forward with it as well. So it essentially gives you more leverage. Now what I found was, um, being that I used that second set of extensions, um, later that was to my detriment, which you'll see in a moment. But basically as you turn clockwise that long bolt, you can see it just brings the rest of the, it's very satisfying, <laughs> brings the rest of the collar forward. Just working slow and steady you can see here to my detriment using that really longer extension set um, we can see there was actually kind of like a falling effect as the collar was moving forward very nice uh, but the rest of the unit at the back was falling off so I uh, backed off loosened the bolt and um, decided to try one more time you can see beautifully that collar coming forward awesome Bring the camera back a little bit for you guys. Keep tightening, but you see here, I basically maxed out the bolt and realized that now I've got to take that out and take those uh, you know, longer, ex that second set of extensions out. So just utilizing one set of extensions here, retightening the back, the back uh, part of the puller. With that tightened, we can put this front section back on again, the washers and the nuts. And we can then go ahead and thread that long bolt through and pull the rest of the collar forward. I was just waiting for that moment where it was going to go click and fall out. And here we go. Yes, how satisfying is that, guys? Awesome. So with that done, we can go and take this uh, bearing puller kit off. And there it is. She's off. Lovely. <laughs> the one guys so yeah depending on how badly uh, or how bad the condition of your bearing is um, you know yours may come out all together with the hub unit uh, but unfortunately in this case it welded itself but um, this kit was just amazing guys without it I don't reckon you can really do this job especially if your collar has really seized on quite well but uh, with that now done um, go ahead you can clean up that shaft bear and essentially we're just gonna return um, and reverse the process. So we're going to go return and put on a new um, hub unit, which I bought for, it was under $100 uh, from, I believe, Repco. Um, there's always some going around. Uh, but we can see, yeah, that complete kind of um, uh, failure of the collars and that kind of bearing area. That that's why we could hear a lot of uh, noise. Uh, so with the new one, let's go slap it on. Nice and quiet bearing there, awesome.
he was just making sure everything was nice and clean and um, with that very scientific uh, method <laughs> completed uh, we can chuck this new one on just slide straight on with a little bit of encouragement beautiful nice and smooth quiet and just gliding easily awesome we just need to kind of continue reversing everything now what I found was um, I didn't want to just put this nut straight on um, I had a little bit of uh, you know medium strength thread locker which unfortunately was starting to dry out a little bit so <laughs> I went ahead and just used some on a screwdriver uh, place some onto the threads here um, you don't need as much as I used here um, but uh, that's it make sure you're wearing gloves <laughs> uh, and that's that just for a bit of peace of mind so that the nut doesn't come loose and with that thread locker on we can go ahead and put our nut back on again for anyone watching so far thanks again for all the support um, and again I hope this uh, video is helping you all all right hand tight first double checking everything very nice beautiful we can go ahead and tighten that nut now if you can get a, a socket that's uh, half the actual size that I've got here because this one being so long it kind of falls off the the nut head a little bit but um, if you've got a helper it will definitely make your life a lot easier uh, but here I found I went back to my breaker bar and um, went to go ahead and tighten up the nut now make sure that you go ahead and um, adhere to the manufacturer recommendations for the t uh, tightening Newton meter spec um, here I just went with the old tightener until you feel it's nice and snug and then go a little bit more <laughs> I found the actual steering everything was turning with it um, so to my comfort level and experience I found that this was sufficient for me and I uh, went for one triple check really heaving and beautiful we lifting the car so I gathered that was enough for me beautiful and that's it with that done um, we can go ahead and start to wrap up the last few things so awesome uh, with that let's get to the next step of the reassembly which is uh, installing reinstalling the ABS sensor so I did it off camera it just slots straight back in and then you can tighten it with the securing bolt um, and before you move on always double triple check your bolts it'll be that one day guys that you forget and you <laughs> you have a headache on your hands so all right with our ABS sensor in we can go chuck our rotor and brake caliper assembly back onto the hub now <clears throat> it is quite heavy so if you're on your own maybe put a second bucket underneath the hub area here but you want to just locate the male and the female um, sections here uh, the five male studs to the five female holes sounds like a party <laughs> What I did uh, was use two of the uh, wheel nuts to hold the rotor um, in place and be as tight in its place as possible before I went to the rear to install the two bolts for the brake caliper uh, carrier. So with these just <clears throat> put on to hold it firm in place, um, as firm as possible. <laughs> now we can go to the rear, the booty of the rotor and um, install the two bolts, two 15mm bolts here, <clears throat> the upper and lower for the carrier. Just remember for the uh, top one guys you've got that brake line uh, holder uh, adapter there as well so that go on together. You can tighten that one up. Now guys, we can get to the last bolt here. Um, I use some Loctite again, and um, we can place that one in also. Okay guys, so as you've gone and tightened up both of the bolts, um, if possible, go and use the recommended manufacturer torque settings and specifications um, but once you've gone and double checked that everything's tight as it should be that's it nice job done basically guys um, coming from the front really all that we've got to do here just double check everything's spinning nicely as it should perfect and um, we can go and remove those wheel nuts that we just 
temporarily put on to hold the rotor tight onto the hub. And with those nuts out the way, that's it. You can go and um, put the dust cap back on and it just pushes straight in. I ended up using a bit of a rubber mallet to make sure that that um, had seated in 100%. Awesome. Nice. Job done. Guys, I hope this video helped. Um, as we can see, there's not a lot that's involved. Uh, just some key steps along the way. Just make sure that you've um, got yourself all the tools that's required, especially this uh, separator and puller set, if you indeed find that your um, bearing sleeve has welded itself onto the shaft, but it was such a saving grace. Oh my goodness. Um, some of the other tools that um, I used throughout the video was that half inch breaker bar, a heavy rubber mallet. We needed a 15 millimeter socket. I also throughout the video used a 17 millimeter socket and a 19 millimeter socket. I also found a eight millimeter socket for the ABS sensor, spanner. another 19 millimeter spanner, and also a flathead screwdriver. <laughs> Sorry for the delay in videos, guys. These days I've got a lot on the go, but I'll always be looking to video my processes of mods and servicing as I go in case it helps you all. Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to flick something for luck. I uh, look forward to the next video for you all, and um, take care, guys. Catch us next time.